Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Light Dark Academy. My name is Giuseppe Improta and today's topic is uh, color management. In this multi-part episode, I'll try to explain you what color management is, how many pieces it's made of, and then we will also see in a few software how color management is handled and why it is really important that you understand how it works and why it is an actual problem in the digital media production. So before going into the digital aspect of the things, I will try to explain what the color space is with a very simple uh, example and in simple terms. So let's say that I have to paint something and uh, uh, I only have a collection of, for example, 12 pencils. This is my color space. So a color space is uh, nothing else than a group of colors that are grouped under a name and there is nothing more than that to it. Now in 1931 the scientists created the, the uh, CIE 1931 color space which is a theoretical color space based on uh, the human vision, on the human eye uh, capabilities of uh, reading and reproducing colors. It is a very big color space that is uh, based on uh, how the eye basically reads and interprets the wavelengths of the light from the sun in a daylight. Basically the primary colors are our rainbow colors and mixing them together gives us the colors that the human eye can reproduce. Now the problem with this color space is that it's huge, it's very big and there is no device that is actually able to uh, display, capture or reproduce uh, all these uh, colors. So why the digital world kept expanding between 1931 until 1996 uh, when internet was basically starting exploding, uh, there was more and more the need for a color space that would actually give a standard and unify all the devices in order to have something to refer to. And if I was a camera manufacturer, I would know that I could uh, uh, make my camera able to uh, reproduce and capture the colors of that standard, the color of the color space. In 1996, HP and Microsoft created this sRGB color space, which is still today the standard for internet and generic image visualization. Now this uh, sRGB color space is much smaller than the CIE 1931 color space. What this means in practical terms is that it does not have as many colors, like your pencil box is limited uh, with the amount of colors that you can reproduce. You can still mix them, but you can only create so many shades of those colors by mixing them. Another color space that was actually created uh, pretty much at the same time was the Adobe RGB and uh, um, the Adobe RGB color space is what is considered the standard color space for photography because as uh, a wider range of colors in the greens especially as well as uh, the blues and when you are photography for example a landscape these are colors that are always or most of the time there in the picture and you want to make sure that you are able to reproduce and capture uh, those colors that your human eye is looking at. So in these five minutes I told you already three standards, the SIE 1931, the Adobe RGB and the sRGB and these are just three of the many standards that are out there. There is a standard for the HD which is Rec 709, there is the color space for the Ultra HD which is Rec 2020, there is uh, the color space that is used in the visual effects uh, which is ACES color space and there are other color spaces that are basically targeting a very specific use. You always have to keep in mind what is the output of your images? Where are these images that you are capturing going? So let's make a simple example. Uh, let's say that I have uh, captured the picture and then I want to print it. In my case, the paper is the final output that I want to have my picture on. 
and each paper might have different characteristics so one paper might have a little bit more yellowish tone to it one paper is shinier one paper is matte one paper is uh, a thicker and so absorbs more color and so forth and so on so you have to take into account all these things to make sure that what you are looking at the screen is actually what's gonna end up on the paper and this is the science of color management so it's making sure that what you are looking at corresponds to what's gonna be ultimately in the in the output that you decide your product to be let's make another example uh, the standard the the color space of the digital projectors that you know are today used in any cinema theater is dci p3 that's another color space so when you are uh, working with the colors when you are grading your colors to then project these images at the theater you want to make sure that you are looking at colors that then the projector is able to display or for example uh, if you are doing photography you want to make sure that the colors that the camera is captured are correctly visualized by the display you are looking them on as you can see there is always this relationship between input and output and everything that is in between that is color management so the science of color management helps the creative process of going from something that you're looking at to your final output the problem can become more complicated when you want to pass from one color space to the other when you want to translate one color space to the other and as I told you the CIE 1931 has a set of primary colors based on the human perception of the color but other standards other color spaces have different primaries what this means is that the definition of red in the CIE 1931 is not the same as the sRGB or the Adobe RGB because the spectrum of colors of these color spaces is different same thing for the green same thing for the blue and what this means is that in order to translate one color space into another you have to create some sort of relationship between these colors and there are different ways of transitioning uh, between color spaces now this is a really key factor because in a multimedia production and in a film pipeline there are many steps first of all you have the capture phase where the camera records the images and the camera might record the images with its own color space then these images are given to the post-production or visual effects to do all their jobs then there is the color uh, grading or digital intermediate and then there is the output on the projector so all these uh, uh, different phases might have different color spaces that accommodate different needs that's why understanding color spaces is really important because every stage of the digital production has a color space things get even more complicated when we add the file format each file format like jpeg or tiff or mp4 or uh, exr have different color spaces that might be embedded inside the file itself and so what this means is that if you want to open that file with that color space you need to make sure that the application that is opening that file can actually read that color space it is a little bit like if i wanted the friend to make the exact copy of my drawing that i did my with my 12 pencils he needs to have the exact same pencil or he needs to know what were those pencils so that he can find corresponding colors to create the same uh, drawing the same painting that i did now even if a camera for example is able to use the adobe rgb color space that does not mean that the camera or the sensor is able to capture all the colors that are in this adobe rgb color space same thing for a monitor a monitor that is uh, uh, able to display adobe rgb might not be able to display all the colors of the adobe rgb color space and this is where things get interesting because if you take three different monitors that uh, are telling you uh, that they can display adobe rgb they will very likely have different color reproductions and even though the color space is the same for all three of them the colors that they are able to reproduce will be different color space does not mean 
colors. The color space is only the definition of these colors, which colors belong to this group. And then the gamut is the actual capability of a device of displaying which colors. So in this case, in the case of my pencil, the box will be my group. And I know that this box contains 12 colors, but that doesn't tell me which colors are included in this box, in this color space. So always remember that color space does not define which colors a device is able to reproduce, but only which colors are in this color space or are supposed to be in this color space. The gamut is instead the description of which colors the device is able to capture or print or reproduce. So the gamut of my pencil box will tell me exactly which colors are in my 12 box color space. Hopefully this gives you a clear idea of what's the difference between the two things. For example, my camera can shoot in sRGB or Adobe RGB color space, but that does not mean that it's able to reproduce all the tones of green that my eye can capture, or that the Adobe RGB itself is telling us are available for the Adobe RGB color space. Now, when you create something in 3D, it's a little bit different because you are actually creating data. You're not capturing data through a digital sensor. So in that case, you can truly potentially uh, reproduce all the colors numerically, but then you are limited by the definition of the color space into which you are working or by the monitor uh, that you are looking the colors through and also by the output that then you are uh, displaying your images onto. So always remember that you always need to keep in mind what is the output that you are working for. If you are an independent filmmaker, for example, you might be shooting with a, a micro four thirds camera that are really popular these days, like the one I'm using for this video, like a GH5 or a G85. And this camera offer you the opportunity of shooting in different color spaces. You can shoot in sRGB color space, you can shoot in Cine-like color space, in the D-Log color space. And each color space has pros and cons that depends also on which file format you are recording to. Because remember that each color space, as I said before, needs to be supported by the file format that the data is written into. To understand the relationship between the file format and the color space, you can simply think about it in this way. If you need to capture more colors, this means that you need to also have more data in order to reproduce these colors. And so your file format might only be uh, 8 bit instead of 16 bit, and the 8 bit might not be enough to capture all the colors that the color space requires. Now all the software allows you to convert between color spaces with minimal changes in the uh, visual appearance if you are careful in recording the images the right way. And what I mean with that is that most of the time the problems with the color spaces uh, happen because uh, some uh, colors are too bright. For example, if I am uh, taking a picture and I have to print this picture and I am working Adobe RGB color space with very bright greens, when I go print those greens, they will not look the same because the paper cannot reproduce those colors. And so it happens with the blues, with very bright blues or cyan. So this is the limit of the, you know, the output. The paper in this case becomes my limit. But if I had to um, project, for example, a video that I've captured, I need to make sure that the projector is able to reproduce those colors, the same colors that the camera captured. A way of going around the file format is to record in a row. The raw file is basically a file that is simply describing what the sensor has captured without altering the information uh, that the sensor records and without adding any extra operation. In the next video I will explain more how file format work and what happens when you save a JPEG versus a TIFF versus an EXR image for example. But for now what you need to understand is that the file format has also a very important role in defining which color space you can use when you capture or record something. 
All right, so let's do a recap of this first part of uh, the color management uh, episode. Number one, there is the CIE 1931 color space, which represents all the colors that human eye can capture. There are smaller color spaces that are used in different standards. sRGB is used in the web standard, in the internet standard, and uh, Adobe RGB is used in the photographic standard, and then there are other color spaces for different outputs, like uh, um, REC 709 or REC 2020 or DCI-P3 that are used uh, for broadcast television, for HD television, and uh, uh, for uh, cinema projection. And then we said that the color space does not represent which colors the device can actually reproduce, but only what colors the color space allows to be reproduced. And uh, gamut instead is what defines the color that the device can actually capture. Finally, we said that the application needs to be able to read that color space in order to open the file and also that the file type, the file extension, determines which color space you will be able to use when capturing or saving your data. In the next episode, we will uh, see uh, what happens when you save the files, what the differences between file formats, and we will start getting deeper into color management to understand how to make it work to our advantage. So if you like this video and it was helpful, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment below and please share it with your friends. Subscribe to this channel and make sure you click the bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of the new videos. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.